Hi guys, this is Bill from Spencer1984.com, and as you can see, it's back to work on the Kelly's Heroes Jeep. Now, I've had a few people ask me about how I do weathering on my models, so this video is going to be a little bit of a demonstration on the two techniques that I primarily use. Uh, we'll call them the cheap method and the not quite as cheap method. And we'll start out with the cheap method, which for that I need an egg carton, Got some pastels. These are available at pretty much any art supply store. Uh, it's a dollar or two dollars for a package of them. And in this one, it came with a black, a dark gray, a light gray, and a white. But you can also get them in reds, uh, graphite for a metallic look, uh, different colors. So there's lots of options there. A bit of coarse sandpaper and a couple of brushes. And these are ones that I got in the Target makeup section for a buck. So don't need anything too fancy. I just wanted something that had soft and fairly thick bristles on it. And so for this, what I do you can see where I've already done some sanding and this is obviously a really old egg carton but has served very well over the years and all you do here and you can see in there you get your powder. Just dab a little on the brush. And you smear it around. It's not a terribly sophisticated method. And it's something that you can adjust. So there I've darkened it back up using a little black but it's nice in that you can get a pretty realistic pattern with it because the way that it drops, it lays like real dust because that's what it is. And don't limit yourself to what you think is the right color. Uh, you know, brown, gray, mix it up a little bit. Uh, I've got some blues, some reds, and some browns, mixing them all together, you end up with the most realistic combination to give you something like that. So there's the cheap method. And the less cheap method that I like to use is the Tamiya Weathering Masters. And they're arranged alphabetically. They do have more than just these four, but these four are the ones that I use most regularly. Uh, a is sand, light sand and mud. B is snow, soot and rust. C is orange rust, gunmetal and silver. And D, which is particularly useful for exhaust pipes, burnt blue, burnt red and oil stain. And each one comes with its own little applicator. It's got a sponge on one end and a brush on the other. And to use those, you just get a little bit on the brush. And you kind of work it like you're dry brushing, where you try to get it a little heavier in one spot and feather it from there. And it builds up slow enough that you can get some good results because it doesn't go on really heavy all at once. And this is also really good for edge highlighting. So if you want to just bring out some of the detail, get that. There 
you go. As you can see, it doesn't build up really quickly. And you can kind of mix them together. But you get some nice highlights there. And so that's basically all I do. Uh, there's not really a formula for how much or how little should be added. I just keep doing it until it looks right. I try to add less than I think I will because you can always add more and it's a little harder to take it off once you've added too much. But as you saw with the uh, powders, you can go back and kind of counter some of what you've done if you think it's a little too stark. I generally do this as the last thing because I don't like dull coating over it. I just try to make sure that if I handle it from here out, I handle it from some place that I'm not going to leave fingerprints. So, again, that's it. Uh, if you've got any further questions, uh, if there's something that I glossed over, I know this was a pretty quick video, so if you'd like me to go into more detail about anything in particular, uh, leave a comment about that. And I will be back next week with the final video on this. Thanks for watching.